Hello, and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. Today we have with us Vic. Vic is a miniature white schnauzer, and it's all going to be about commercially grooming today. Vic has a very beautiful temperament. Vic is actually born in 2022, so he's actually a very young dog. And Vic has something special. His owners say Vic steals all the socks in the house and he loves playing with socks but if you let him he's also going to tear them apart so vix also likes playing with teddy bears and he goes walking a lot he loves playing outside and when he has a chance vic will jump so vix vic likes to jump over things and jump up and down very much and he's a very active dog. If you're interested in any of the products I'm using in this video, it's very easy. Down below, there's a link. If you click on the link, it's gonna take you straight away to the website where you can buy the products. This video is divided in different chapters. So if you're interested in only the washing or the drying or even scissoring, just go down below and click the chapter you're interested in. My name is Kitty de Kierskieter. I've been grooming since 1979 and I love sharing my knowledge. I've been grooming very much. One day in my life I won the title World Champion Poodle Groomer, but actually I never think about myself being the best. The knowledge I have, I like sharing it and I hope it will inspire you or I hope you will enjoy my video. I don't know how this is gonna work because Vic has a whole pile of hair in his ear. And it's like one big mat here. Like, uh, it's like one, one big, yeah, hard mat. It's like a rock. So here you see me sprinkling the ear powder. The ear powder is gonna give us some more grip. I'm just gonna pat it so the powder goes into the ear well. And now I'm just gonna grab two finger condoms because the finger condoms, I really like to use them. They're keeping my fingers clean and they're giving a lot of grip. And now I'm not sure if this is gonna work. So I'm trying to do really small bits at the time it's possible it's going to get too much to the dog, but like this, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get everything out. I'm just going to show you one side. I've decided to stop. It's not all out, but um, it's very sensitive now. So it's at the time, not too much. When it gets greasy, I take a bit more powder because the powder gives me lots of grip. And then small bits at a time. Good boy. Mm. To me, if you leave all the hair inside, the air cannot get in there and the dirt cannot get out of there. And to me, it's like getting infections and so now we've done the first part with the ear powder and we've taken as much hair out as possible but because there's so much hair in there Vic is going to be having very sensitive ears and because each hair we pulled out out of the skin I don't want to put this product on there because this is containing alcohol and I want to have like a soothing cream instead. And the ear care solution is the best way because this is not going to irritate and we don't need to like have uh, the ears totally as usual in this case. So I'm now going to have a problem because now the ears are very, very, very sensitive. 
because now the air can reach into the ears and Vic is not really used to having air in his ears so he's very sensitive for the moment so it's going to be quite difficult even to put the ear product in the ear so I'm just going to try to put the ear product outside of the ear of course now the ear is all like uh, red Voilà, that's done and now he can just get used to the, 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 the solution. I'm going to give him a small massage. And here you see how the ear is with the solution. Now I'd like to clean out the ear normally, but I would leave it as it is because I don't want to further rub the ears because Vic had so much hair in the ears and now it's like extremely sensitive. So I, I would just leave the ears in Monica. Yeah, I, I'm just going to leave the ears. And when there's product coming on the outside too much, I will clean it, but inside I'm not going to touch him anymore. So now we've finished the uh, ears, we're going to do Vic's nails and we hope it's not going to be such a disaster for you Vic. For the nails I like to have a few products. First of all the nail cutter. I like this one because for me it's the gelatine and you can slice like millimeters small pieces at, at the time. And this is the stop bleed powder for if I have a problem going too close to the quick and the nail is bleeding, I will stop the bleeding immediately with, with the stop bleed powder. I hope it's not going to be the case, but if I have a problem, I have everything on my hands. So here you see that you see that Vic is a uh, Running, a, running around a lot because his nails are absolutely not too long. So there's going to be not much work to do here. You can see this because if you follow the straight line from the pad, like here there's a straight line and if you follow the line there's nearly nothing to be cut off the top. And here you see the side nail is like very sharp. So just let put, put off the little. Here is one. Well. There's nearly nothing to be cut. Voila. Now we've cut the nails. Let's just go slightly over the nails with the nail grinder. I'm going to put off the cap because I prefer using the grinder without the cap. I just have to be careful from the long hair not being twisted around here. So let me just get rid of the hair. I think Vic prefers playing with socks, walking outside and being groomed. Okay, that's one. Not very difficult. I usually go from down. I put the nail on there and then I go upwards if it lets me. <laughs> voilà. I do that a few times and then I go from the side. Two sides and then I go like like this and like that horizontal or diagonal. Actually stop when the nail is nice and round. So when he jumps up to us and on our legs and everything, there's no sharp edges. Okay, now we've done the ears and the nails, and now let's shave some hair out of the pads.
So now you see me opening up the pads. I'm like holding his foot up for the moment. And I'm slowly... I'm gonna go inside. And I'm scooping out all the dirty hair in between. I also make a line here at the back of the pads and I lift it. I just go not very far, but from there to there. So later I'm gonna have my scissor in this area to make a nice foot. So I don't go any further, the line is nice there. And after I've done the outside, I just turn over hold the pads with my two fingers and then go slightly in between and make sure if there's mats or dirt in there that everything is nice and clean. I also like to have this little hairs here going. Also this side. What I like to do is use some speed clean mousse and the speed clean mousse is like, yeah, it's like very nice and quickly for cleaning out the dirty, yellowy, gooey willies. And I like wet it with the mousse. Nicely, voila. And then take the other side and dry it. And then the yellow goo, it's not all over our clippers and blades. And now I'm just gonna shave the willy. The settings from the Laguna is like, this is like very, very short, like a 30. And then this is like a nine. This is like a 15 and this is like a 10. So the private parts I'm doing with the 10 to make sure it's all clean and the people don't have a lot of work in between the grooms. Okay, also his uh, bum is a bit dirty, so here again, it's very easy. The quick clean, you can just do it with paper. It's all clean ready to do some shaving work without having all the bits in between the clipper blades. Nice and clean. So first I'm gonna try to use the 3F and I am going to use it against the direction of the coat. Uh, here it has like a, a lip and this lip has to go in there. It's quite easy. Just put it in there. And then I'm gonna try to go again against the direction of the coat. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or if it's gonna be a good uh, result. Because this, if you go direct, um, against the direction of the coat, it's uh, very good if you have like a hard coat, but um, Vic doesn't really have hard coat. He has like woolly coat. So it might be better to go with the direction instead of against the direction of the coat. Um, I'm doing this before the bath because when you do this before the bath against the direction of the coat, the hair is like very hard and very uh, with sebum and dirty and it's like stiff. 
And when you go against the direction, it's very hard, but you only have to do it before the bath and after the bath, it will be very nice and you don't have to touch it anymore. Um, so it's also a nice finish. You have to do, you have to be aware if you groom against the coat direction, it, it will be a nice finish, but it's always very short. It's half, half as short as you do normally. Let me show you if you, if you do it with the direction of the coat, it's like going to be this way. Because here you see the hairs like lying down and then you push them down and, and here you see the clipper taking the hairs. So the hairs go down and the extra hairs are, you, you are clipping them. If you're going against the coat, because the coat is growing that way, automatically you're going into the coat. So that means you have a better result and the hair is shorter. If you go over it with a comb, you will see it's a, like a very natural finish without any lines. And then here, yes, you can go whatever you want. You can go with the direction, like to have the long hair with the short flowing into each other. Shaving against the direction of the coat is like something personal. People, some people like it very much. I do. Other people don't like it very much. Sometimes it's difficult to get into the coat. Like now I'm struggling a bit because the coat is so thick and it's stiff because it's not washed. So it's difficult to get to the part where I can just go. But once you're there, you can just follow the coat growth. It's a bit more challenging in these areas like here, where then you can just go with the direction to make the difference between long and short. And now I have the medium blade to finish the tail. This is the medium blade and this would be the shortest setting. You see this because the blades, when you move them up and down, this is short, this is a little longer, a little longer and the longest setting. So the tail I did on not the shortest setting, not the longest, but one down. So nearly the longest on with the medium blade. So here now we're trying to get it nice and clean. I wouldn't go shorter than the medium size because it might get itchy. But this area, if you have commercial dogs, you can do them like short, clean. While I have this short blade, I'm going to do the ears or try to do the eels ears because they're now very, very, very sensitive. So the trick for the ears is going to the outside, always 
shaving towards the outside so here outside and then if he lets me go over your fingers like this yes so now I'm holding my fingers below the ear and I'm shaving on top of my fingers so here you see the skin here like there's like a little edge that curls inside how we do this we get it we do our finger below it and then we shave over that little piece of skin on the outside towards the outside here you see I'm shaving on my fingers gently I take my time to do this now I have my finger in the dog's ear and here I'm shaving on top of my finger again. Oh. I'm going to also in the other direction a bit. And like always nicely going to the outside. Yeah, this little bit as well. Now you see a finished ear. Okay. And with the Laguna clipper, you like hold your clipper in your fingers. You don't use the whole hands. And that way you have like, you feel what you're doing. It's very light. It's non-vibrating. It's easy to use, very versatile because you have all these different blades you can use. Now I'm just going to finish uh, his shoulders and chest and I've just put, put on uh, the 5F, which is six millimeters. And I'm gently gonna shave the shoulder. And here I have the hair growing from there to there. So here you see me also going against the direction of the coat. So here I must follow this hair grows. Voila. Against the direction until this line because I'm using a five and if I I don't want to go here because it would be too short here was a 12 against direction so now I'm quite happy with the chest and I'm just gonna take my five again but I'm afraid Vic is not very used to the table so I'm afraid for Vic jumping so I'm just going to take my my 12 millimeter which is a 3f and this slip is going in this little hole there I hold it and I clip it on it's very easy and now I can just finish what I was doing before and just um, here finish going against the direction of the coat. I've changed my uh, blade to the 5F and I'm just doing some blending work because everything I do in before the bath I don't need to do after the bath. I can also go over the coat with this clipper. Voila. 
instead of the clipper I used the 12 against, I'm now just going over with the direction of the coat. Clipping against the direction is perfect for very hard coats, but since Vic has been shaved a few times now, it's really getting very soft, the hair, and wooly. And now I've changed blade again to do the rest of the head. Now I have the seven, which is shorter again. Voila, Vic is all ready to go into the bath and Kitty Ponnet is gonna assist us in washing and drying Vic. Kitty, thank you for your help. So to wash Vic for the first shampoo, for the first wash, um, we prefer the Super Clean 40. Uh, Vic has a really greasy coat, a really greasy skin. Um, and because yeah, it's a commercial model, really the hair has to stand up. So the Super Clean will absorb all the grease um, and all the dirt. So we have a pure coat. Like you see, the Super Clean 40 is really a paste shampoo, it's a thick shampoo, it's a very concentrated shampoo. So we have to dilute it very well, as recommended, 1 to 40. So we take a soup spoon, not too much because the Super Clean 40 will foam a lot. And we do it in a bucket or in a bowl or whatever you prefer. So this is actually the amount of shampoo we are going to use. And actually for one dog, it's a little bit too much. And in the bowl, we put the Super Clean 40, one soup spoon, and we will dilute it with hot water. You have to use really hot water before you have a very good dilution and it's diluted well. I take my spoon, you can take a, a mixer or something you have in your grooming shop, you can also do it like this. And like you see it's already been foaming a lot. You can do that in the morning if you have a grooming shop. You can prepare your first shampoo, like five liters diluted shampoo. And I, I really like to do this in the morning before the first dog comes in. And you have a whole bucket of shampoo to wash every dog of that day. So to add the shampoo on every dog, I use the Showtech foaming sponge. So I do it in my bucket, in my bowl, and we can start washing the dog. So first I'm gonna pre-wet the dog. I always leave the hat for the last part because if you start pre-wet the, the hat is going to shake and, and actually Vic he really likes to want to jump out of the bath so I'm using a grooming noose to hold him in the bathtub because I don't want him to jump out and also I think if I always if I already start pre-wetting the dog's head, he will shake a lot and that would not sound nice. So I'm taking the sponge, I 
put it in the shampoo. And I start with So actually the sponge is used to bringing the shampoo on the dog's coat. I use my fingertips to really clean the skin because this is really important that you clean the skin. If it's a long-haired dog or a short-haired dog, it doesn't matter, but use your fingertips to really wash the skin of the dog. It's really, really important that you really clean the skin because there is where the dirt is and where the grease is. Also between the toes, you really scrub it well because like the legs and the toes are the most dirty parts. So take your time, do it well, do it structured. Actually, what I like to do is, if you have like one dog and you have like or you do it in a bucket, you have like the super clean 14, a five liter bucket. I do it in a small bucket or a smaller bucket for one dog. I put some diluted shampoo in it. And I really like for bigger dogs, put the feet because it's just for that dog. You cannot do that if you have a five liter bucket, but I put the feet into the diluted shampoo and let it in there for if he wants, if the dog wants for 30 seconds, so it absorbs all the dirt. And I wash the rest of the leg and then I take, put it out, I take the other Like I put the feet in the bucket and like you see, just without, just putting two feet, look, without scrubbing, without doing anything, it absorbs all the dirt. So I take my thumbs, put the eyebrows above on the skull, and I wash it like this. It doesn't matter what kind of shampoo you're using, what brand or whatever, just be aware that you don't put, or you try to, don't do it, put shampoo in the dog's eyes. If that happens, just rinse. But I really like to use my thumbs and put power on it. And wash it like this. Also the ears. But it also, like the rest of the body, it's really important that you wash the head of the dog very good. It's, it's the same of if washing the backs or the legs. Don't ignore it, just wash it very intensively so it's clean. By washing a dog very, very good, it also will give you a nice finish if the head is still dirty or greasy you will never have a good finish. So the preparing, the washing of the dog, the drying, every step of the grooming session is very important 
that you have a nice finish at the end of the session. So about rinse, rinsing the dog, I always thought that the back, because the water comes from above to down, so it takes all the dirt. He's really short, but I really like to put my shower head against the skin and rinse it from above to the end. And I always do it structured. So I start at the back, I put the back leg, Go to the middle, go to the front leg, rinse it. Take the feet, then turn off the dog. And again, I start at the back, the back leg, the tummy, the middle part, the front leg. I always start with rinsing the head. So this is the last part I wash from the whole body and I rinse it at first because if the dog shakes like this, some foam can get in his eyes or it's really important to prevent that. If it happens, just rinse immediately. But this is my last part to wash and this is my first part to start rinsing. rinsing. Then the back back leg, middle part, front leg, turn around, same structure on the other side. So you don't forget any spot. Okay, so we have washed uh, Vic with the first wash with the Super Clean 40. The second wash will be with the Shell Tech Plus Brightening Shampoo. Why? Well, because Vic is a white dog of course, so it will lighten up the white coat and also it will add a little bit of volume. So the brightening will, not too much, it's not a volume shampoo, but it will put up the root of the hair a little bit up so it will be more easier uh, to scissor afterwards. So the brightening is a concentrated shampoo, 1 to 35. So I have with me the mixing bottle and I already filled it up. Where is it? 1 to 35, let me see, is it here? Yes. So I already filled up the mixing bottle with water just below the 1 to 35, so it's really easy to use. And then I will add the shampoo just until the finishing line. You see the concentrated shampoo is now at the bottom of the mixing bottle. So I put up and shake it very well. Never, ever, never, ever use a brightening shampoo when it's not diluted. Well, actually, every professional brightening, whitening shampoo. Most of the time, like this one, this is like a purple, a deep purple shampoo, especially when it's very concentrated. So we really recommend, doesn't matter what brand, doesn't matter what shampoo, as long as it's a concentrated shampoo, you really have to dilute it. If you use it pure on a white coat, you can have a little bit of a surprise. Like it has a blue line or a blue, a light blue color in it. So be aware, always dilute it. This is not a coloring shampoo. This is an enhancing shampoo. And like you see, you put the shampoo on the dog's coat and you start to wash it. And again, I'm using my finger tops. You see that it's actually white, white. So it's not a coloring shampoo. It's really to lighten up the natural color of 
the coat. So for white dogs, black dogs, it will give a deep and clean shine to the coat. Because it is diluted, you can use quite a lot of shampoo because yeah, you have to wash it very, very well. It has to foam very well. Um, normally, like for that size of dog, I'm using a, a half a liter, 500 milliliters of diluted shampoo. And again, we wash it very intensively. Very good. And also, it doesn't matter what shampoo, again, a professional shampoo, you have to let the do the shampoo his work. So I like to let it rest for about three minutes, three to five minutes, that you give the shampoo the opportunity to do his job or it is made for. So I don't rinse it immediately. I leave it there for three to five minutes. Of course, it's another story with the hat. Yeah, I, I don't want the dog to shake and I put it on, I wash it and I, it's the first thing I rinse it. So I leave my hand just above the eyes if he wants. I like to put up his head a little bit. And again, I'm using my thumb to wash the dog's head. Okay, so I washed the dog for the second wash and this is actually the amount of diluted shampoo I have used for Vic. So it's approximately, yeah, a half a liter, diluted. What well, means one to 35, so I didn't use a lot of shampoo. Concentrated. Of course, we are going to use a conditioner. And I really like to prefer for the Schnauzer, um, the Rise and Shine conditioner. It's a, a volume conditioner, so what it will do, it will lift up every hair, it will stand up, and because it's a commercial and the back is shaved, uh, and we need to scissor the legs, and we need to finish the whole dog, it ha the hair has to stand up to give it a smooth finish. Don't really want to use a lot of conditioner. Um, you can use the Rise and Shine diluted, or you can use it pure, you can dilute it 1 to 40. Um, but I will use it pure, but don't use a lot, because I don't want to really moisturize, because it's also moisturized. But the only thing I really want to do is lift up every hair. So, I use this, I rub it in my hand, like you put a hand cream on it, actually it is, and I will rub it, massage it in the dog's coat. Don't use it like this directly on the coat because you will have one spot with a lot of conditioner. Just Rub it in your hands and rub it in the dog's coat. And again, the hat as the last part, even with the conditioner. He might well enjoy it while we do it. It's connecting you with the dog. You see him enjoy it. Not always, but most of the dogs will enjoy it. So I left the Rise and Shine conditioner for about a little five minutes on the dog. So the conditioner can do his work, can do what he's made for. And then I'll rinse it. So I start to rinse. 
So again, I'm starting on the head. He doesn't really like it. So after the head, I start again with the back, the back legs, the middle part, the front legs. And I rinse it very good. Don't, fast is not always good. So rinse it so all of the products, all of the conditioner is rinsed out. So we make the dog towel dry before we start drying the dog. and he's enjoying it. Okay, Vic is washed, so I'm going to dry Vic now, and I'm using the Groomix Zeppelin dryer, so uh, with the nozzle. So first of all, um, I'm going to blow up most of the water out of the coat, so it doesn't matter what kind of breed, my experience, you start at the back because the water is, from, is going from above to down. So it's really kind of ridiculous to start at the bottom, at the feet. No, you always start at the highest point of the dog. Actually, the highest point is the head, but I don't like to start at the head. Because normally, most of the time, the dog will start panicking and, yeah, sometimes you're lost. So, I start with the back, back leg, the middle, front leg. I turn around the dog, again, back leg, middle, front leg. And then I start trying the dog's head. I don't want to dry the hair flat. I want to dry the hair that every hair is standing up because we will scissor it and we will clip it, clipping using the clipping again. So it has to have a nice finish. And because of that, with Vic, every hair has to stand up. So actually, I'm not blow drying him flat that way, but I'm drying him that way so every hair is really standing up on the back, but also on the legs. So I really try, use the dryer to open up the coat, to add volume to the coat. So this is really like, okay, all the small things that matters to give you a really nice finish and a really nice scissor work. I turn off the hose and I add to make the Zeppelin a stand dryer. So now I can put the Zeppelin on and I can brush my dog's coat. Easy as that. Our sweet Vic doesn't like or is not a fan at drying his head. He's panicking so I don't want to push through. So what I will do now is I will brush it all out and to dry the head, I will put him in the drying cabin. But first I'm going to spray the quick fix spray on the dog's coat. This will do a lot of things, but what I will do is he has some mats in the coat, so it will be a detangling spray. And actually it will also lift up a little bit more the dog's coat. 
So I'm using the Mag Magic Mist Sprayer with Quick Fix Spray, not too much, but a little bit. I'm going to spray it on the legs of the dog for brushing up. So how sweet he is, he doesn't like to dry his head. So I'm going to brush out um, the beard and the eyebrows and I'm going to let them sleep a little bit in the cabin dryer. So it's ideal in your grooming shop. It's ideal when you have multiplied dogs a day. Um, and you don't have enough time, you're in time pressure, or an older dog or a puppy wants to get used to being dried and they don't like it, the cabin dryer is ideal for that. Um, so actually I prefer to brush out the coat before you let the dog rest into the cabin dryer. So I'm going to brush out. I have a tangle here, a little one. Here we go. Just a small one. went into the drying cabin to um, dry his head. It's completely dry now. So I'm gonna brush it out again, of course. After being in the drying cabin, I recommend just to fluff the coat with a brush to fluff it out, not brush it out, but just fluffing it. So it's ready to be finished and scissored. By fluffing, you, I mean what's fluffing. I don't use pressure on my brush. I just let with Vic to create volume, to stand up. So I add, I brush it out, so there is no curls anymore, that it's straight. And I just put it and brush it in the shape I want it. Because I already brushed the whole coat out, really brushing out, but now I'm just using no pressure and just brush the coat out in the way I want it to be finished and it's going to be scissored. I'm using um, the Sheltec Greyhound Antistatic comb just to comb the coat through. This is also some point where you can 
control the code if all the mats are gone. Like this one was a really small one, but I'm using the comb. I using the comb to control and to check the code if all the mats are gone. So you have the brush and you have a comb. And this is really for brushing the mats out, the coat, to put the coat open. And the comb is there to check the coat if everything is smooth and all the mats are gone. Just a small one. And I just can comb it out. Before you finish a dog, and it doesn't matter what breed or but be sure that all the mats are combed out, that you don't destroy your scissors just by accident. There is still a mat in the coat. So it has to be tangle free, totally. Vic is ready to be scissored. Okay, so Vic is ready to be scissored and because his face has just been dried, I normally don't do this, but I'm first going to do the face. The beauty of this table is now I have all this area and I can move the control post to the left or to the right. So it's a commercial groom and I'm gonna go quite short in the beard because as you all saw in the beginning of the video, you saw like uh, the beard was very long and not really very clean. So I s asked the owner if I could do the beard quite short and the owner said it's absolutely not a problem. Um, this is one I like very much. Then, then this is uh, to more the finishing. Uh, it's more a finer scissor to do the, the lines here. And I was planning to first play around a bit and make like uh, the hair on the head a bit longer. And then just to show you and then I was going to make it shorter. So now I'm just going to go around and clean up everything from the inside of the eyes because I like to see the eyes. And I already have my favorite on this coat. I like the ergo line. This is a small chunker and it's really doing a very good job on this kind of coat. And like this part, I'm not afraid of like cutting everything off because it's just black hair and it's not really nice. So I'm just like combing everything on backwards and then making sure it's like here like in a straight line so here I can go shorter I also don't want to have a big difference here, like from short to long, I want to like it 
have a slow blend between short and long. And here I'm trying to like make sure if I like here this little hair here is like still in front of the eyes. I, I need to have a, like a very smooth. If I do this, I don't want any hairs in front of the eyes. So here now I'm just going like short. And now I just need to do the other side, same thing. So I'm going to comb everything backwards and start from here. And here I'm just going to comb everything upwards and then follow this line. And here I just keep on making it smooth, making the line between very short and very long also smooth so it's not such a big difference. And I'm just going to keep, keep like combing all the hairs backwards until everything is nice and there's no more hair sticking out. And the eyebrows, I keep like combing them backwards and then like comb, uh, going from the top and I'm really not going to leave very long eyebrows. Then I can comb them to the front and then I can still do like that on the sides. And normally I don't do the head first, but in many cases, because it's a schnauzer and the beard was all dry, I didn't want the beard to be wet again. So that's why I finished the beard and the face. Now I'm just finishing the side of the ears. It's very important that also this is nice. So I'm like holding the ears. And I'm just like without any much pushing on the, my scissors. I'm just getting rid of the small hairs which are uneven from the clippers. Okay, now I need to finish the neck. Okay. I'm just finishing the top of the head. As you saw in front, uh, before the bath, I didn't really want to shave it. I wanted to keep this nice and fluffy and to give it like a bit of a teddy bear look. Also make sure if you 
comb the hair to the front and it looks presentable. And you saw me go short here. This is because I really like to have the hairs from the nose, like this bit of hair here. I, I like these hairs to be short because they're always wet anyway. Next to the nose. Ah, oh, you have a beautiful nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cutie. So I don't mind spending a bit longer on the head as long as I have brushed it and combed it in all kind of direction because it's the first point you see if you look at the dog, you look at the head and I think that, you know, you should take your time and finish the head beautifully. And I'm just trying to comb the hairs in all kinds of directions and making sure there's no bits sticking out. <laughs> okay, that's the head. Done. Well, now I'm going to start doing the bottom of the feet. I've combed all the hair down and now I'm just going to turn the pad around and like cut the hair which is sticking out on the back. Here I'm always doing the front of the feet first and I'm going very short here towards the nails and I'm just doing this part first because then when I get the dog standing up. I know exactly how the leg is and I try to make always the leg as straight as possible. So if you do this point first, then to draw a line from the top to the bottom in one piece, it's easier for me. Uh, since we're scissoring now, I just change to the scissoring comb. And now I'm just doing around the foot. And the other side as well, just round and round. And once we're there, then we can take a straight scissor and just go down. And now I'm going, maybe I'll blend this a bit, this here and on the top. Because that spot on the top can be really, really short. And once it's done, between the short and the longer coat, when that, when, once that is totally natural, Here as well, like here, I'm li lifting, this is very short, very long. And here I'm just going to take the chunker, work away the difference between the long and the short. So it's all nice and natural.
So you saw me use the quick fix spray here. And now, as you can see, I have like little points here sticking out. And because of the spray I used, I see more where to cut and which points to scissor. And the hair is not wet, but just a bit humid. And I can like, like comb the hair, you know, with my comb, I in, out. I layer the hair all nicely from the bottom to the top. And then I look profile wise and I can make a nice line from the top to the bottom. And here I see now I have to either take this, this the clipper, because here I like missed a bit, or I just do this with my scissor over comb technique and go a bit shorter. And now I'm just going to use the spray again because white on white is difficult to see. And well, I'm going to just a bit. And it's important to tell you this is not a spray. This is like a mister. If you would use the original bottle from the quick fix spray, it would be too, too much product. But if you do the product in a mister, then look, you will see wherever it's a bit moist and the points will like stick out and we have a better vision on where to cut, where to scissor. So here you see me working on the front again. And so this little bit of hair here is like still in my way. So let me just finish here. Okay. So I, I just want to follow the natural line of the dog here. And I don't want any hair sticking out, so let me just finish here. Okay, so now we follow the shoulder, and this is the, ang the front angulation. And then from there we have a straight line, straight back, and we comb the hair to the front, and we try to hold this hair where I'm scissoring now to make it as short as possible. We don't want the dog with socks. So this needs to be a straight line. And also the back is a straight line here. And then when we move to the front, we make the legs as straight as possible. So they're like cylinders and then we comb in all kind of directions and if we have still some hair sticking out after we've combed we cut them off And because it's commercial, I'm just going like very short at the behind. Okay. I'm not getting rid of this hair because that will be like this one and so it will be like a cowboy. So. I don't know if you remember, but we did all the clipper work in front of the bath, in front of the bath, and this all looks pretty natural, so I don't really need to touch here. I just touched here a bit because it was like a bit too long, and if I want to, I can still go over it. So now I'm like going over it with a, what is it, a 7F. I'm not pushing very much. And this I'm going to leave as it is. Here, you remember the line, so now I'm going to put here. I can put my scissor under that line and under that line. Yeah. So 
this is the east, the, the nice thing we did. And now we can go around and round and round. Once we've done that, now we comb everything up. And here we can go really short here as well. Now I need a straight scissor. Let me show you the angulation I I'm trying to make, even though it's commercial, doesn't worry. Diagonal, diagonal, this is the angulation. So let me show you where he folds. So this is the place he folds. So this is one, two, three. So let me put the paw back down. So now he's one, two, three. And then going back close to where the point of my fingers are. So this is not straight where I'm cutting now because like here it's very short and here it's very long the hair. So here it's very short. Let's blend the long hair with the short hair. So now, because everything is like falling down and I don't really see what I'm doing, I'm just gonna okay. now the hair is a bit wet, and that's gonna be easier. Also trying to do the inside. Sometimes it's easier to lift a few other legs to do the inside. Or sometimes this leg. Voila. And here you see a total finished wig. And here you see the before and the after pictures. any questions about what I did in this video you're very welcome to write them down below or if you have any ideas of future videos or breeds as well you're also very welcome to write them down below thank you for watching this was kitty for kitty talks dogs and see you next time <laughs>